The date was June 28, 1969. The Stonewall Inn housed perhaps the most influential event in gay history. The patrons of Stonewall were not only fed up with being mistreated as a minority, they were also grieving over the recent death of Judy Garland, an icon for the gay community. The Stonewall Inn was not unlike any other gay bar in New York at the time. The owners, who were heterosexual, served overpriced, watered-down drinks and paid the police to stay away from the bar for the night. Our money, we had to go somewhere, so we were, you wanted to charge us three dollars, and in the 50s and 60s, three dollars was a lot of money just to walk in our door. We would pay it. And we would pay big dollars to drink rat gut booze. They'd put rat gut booze in the fancy name bottles, and you didn't complain. It wasn't like you'd just go out and go to a gay bar, or go out and be openly gay on the street without being criticized, or beaten up, or or arrested by the police for being the person who were. Nonetheless, the police harassed gays and lesbians, especially patrons of gay bars. They would arrest them as they entered and exited, sometimes even entering the bars and arresting everyone present. On the night of the Stonewall riots, the patrons of the bar refused to take the harassment as they had every other night. They fought back violently against the officers, setting fire to trash cans and throwing cans and bottles. Gay people just wanted to go in this bar to have a drink and dance with their best friends, and the police would traditionally just come in and harass and beat up, and you know, and uh, they just wouldn't take it. They ripped up parking meters and knocked out windows. Members of the community soon joined with sympathizers in solidarity. It took off. Everybody started fighting. In 1929, the Great Depression occurred, causing discrimination for many minorities. In the 1940s, as the USA prepared for World War II, one was tolerated as a lesbian in the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, or WAAC, if her job was needed due to her special skills. There were even some WAAC battalions that consisted almost completely of lesbians. Radical social change occurred as war raged on. In 1951, the Mattachine Society was formed with the slogan, Gay is Good, by a small group of men as the first homosexual organization. They created the first gay magazine, the Mattachine Review. Disparaging treatment, however, continued. Some of my friends, they were put in, uh, in uh, institutions have shock treatment like that was going to help you know that was sad people say well why do you try to look like a man we didn't try to we had to we had to for survival we just learned to dress more like a man i mean i just wanted to play in the prairie with the guys with guns and football and all that stuff i don't know like dolls and all that stuff then when i realized hey wait now i like women <laughs> you know but i didn't like those women i just didn't i didn't it wasn't into boys that way at that time gay people were active not only for the gay and lesbian community, but we were activists, period, for the entire liberation of, of the people. So our activism centered around other organizations. In the 1960s, the Civil Rights Movement was started, and the National Organization for Women, or NOW, was formed. We were chased in cars, you know, gangs of teenage kids would chase you to try to beat you up and stuff, so you always have a, had a, always had a fast car. I always had a fast car to outrun them, you know. A gentleman by the name of Rich Chin was just saying goodbye to his partner at the Greyhound bus station, and he just gave him a peck on the cheek, and the police swept in and arrested him. In 1961, Illinois became the first state to repeal a law banning homosexuality. In 1964, the Cook County Sheriff raided a Chicago bar and arrested 109 patrons. The names of eight men were printed in the Chicago Tribune the next day, one of whom was a high school teacher who resigned from his job the next morning. Not long after Stonewall in 1970, the first gay pride parade, or march as it was considered then, took place. I think because the parade again helped me come up because I just saw a vast array of the GLBT community in the parade 
it just energized me to want to bring lots of different types of people in the parade. So that both gay people as well as non-gay people on parade day would just see just this amalgam of lots of different types of people as opposed to just one type of person or one stereotype or just all white people or just and, and I think the parade reflects that now. I think it's racially diverse, ethnically, economically. In 1971, the Chicago Gay Alliance, an organization focused on promoting gay rights, was founded by Henry Gerber. The Gay Dollar Project was created in the 1980s by Marge Summit and Frank Kellis. Bills were marked with the red stamp that said Gay Dollar. So I had a stamp made that said Gay Dollar, and we started passing them out to, uh, we got all the bars and a lot of the people, we got letters across the country, people wrote to us and wanted a stamp, and it had to be in red because it shows up nice on red. And we got $17 million stamped. The object of doing the Gay Downer campaign, to show you what it's like to hand somebody a bill that says Gay Dollar and they look at you like, you're queer. Catching AIDS, you'll never get it. And we live everywhere. And we do have a lot of money to spend. And that's what we were trying to get across with the Gay Dollar Campaign. And it worked. It really worked. This campaign caused the city government to pass the Gay Rights Bill. They weren't happy with us. So guess what they passed? The Gay Rights Bill. Just to show, We said we'd do it for one year. And if you didn't pass it, we'd continue it. Marge Summit, a gay activist, owned a bar in the Wrigleyville neighborhood. His and hers welcomed everyone gay, straight, and all ethnicities. She invited musicians and was said to have great entertainment and the best burgers in Chicago. The best half pound burger in the world and the best french fries. We hand sliced them on a mandolin by hand and they were a little thicker than a potato chip. So when you dropped them in the oil, they puffed up. Yes, ask the Cubs people. They used to come in my bar and eat. Yeah, that's what I was known for, my hamburgers and half pounders. In 1987, Act Up Chicago, a very vocal AIDS activist group, was formed by Lori Cannon and Daniel Sotomayor. Evergreen Food Mart, which is not there any longer, had written an article in their, their neighborhood newspaper that this is when AIDS was very prevalent and said that don't let them touch you, sneeze on you, cough on you, whatever, you'll get AIDS, blah, blah, blah. And I said to Frank, this is ridiculous, you know, I mean, I hug and kiss all these guys all the time. I'm not going to get it, you know. So we've got to educate these people. I sat, I had a bar and I went to his bar afterwards and we'd sit in course and I said, oh, I got a good idea. Can you get me two people, you and somebody and me and my daughter, meet me at nine o'clock at the Evergreen Food Mart. So we met there on a Saturday and we each took a shopping cart and we walked through the store and we filled it with non-perishable merchandise heaped to the very top with this, even the smallest minute thing we could find, which was very important because that meant more to put away. We had four huge shopping carts. We could hardly push them. And we parked them in each aisle. And we said, we will come back every Saturday and do this. But we also called the mayor's office and had Kit Duffy outside waiting. Uh, and we said, we would come down and do this every Saturday to you until you put a retraction in the paper about AIDS, because that's not how you catch AIDS. It must be sexually transmitted. And uh, you also have to make a sizable donation to the Gay Community's AIDS Foundation. And he, and then we went outside, and Kid Duffy came in and gave him our demands, and he wrote a check right then and there. And so I said to Frank, well, that was easy. In 2006, Chicago held the Gay Games for the first time. These games mirror the Olympic experience for gay athletes. It's, you know, it's been a battle. And it's still a battle. It's still not, it's not a perfect, and it never will be a perfect world. But you just try to make it the best you can.